began brainstorming the design of the metal frame, which would eventually become the frame of the umbrella on July 29th. I had experimented with a variety of designs, including both curved and straight edges. Eventually I landed on the design consisting of three tiers, five columns, and a flat top. This resulted in a total of 15 flat panels. I submitted the plans to Lauren Tipton, a local carpenter and welder who I have worked with in the past. He created a cardboard prototype, followed by the final welded frame. Up until this project, I had never sewed, let alone designed a pattern for a sewing project. But with my background in multi-layer stencil design, I figured I could conceptualize an accurate enough design to fit the metal frame. I recreated the 16 panels in paper and taped the assembled pattern to the frame to confirm the accuracy of my measurements. The paper pattern fit well and provided the confidence I needed to start cutting into the fabric. I sat down with some heavy duty thread and 2.5 yards of weatherproof sumbrella fabric. The fabric cut easily. All panels were cut with a 1 inch bleed as well as an additional 3 inches for all panel sides. I gathered the three pieces of the first column, inserted the two top pieces under the needle and smack! The screw that holds the needle smashed down against my finger. Not the start I was looking for. I pressed the foot pedal again and sank the needle down into the fabric. My first seam finished quickly. A few snags but nothing that a Facebook post and welcome advice could not fix. I finished all five columns pretty effortlessly. I sewed them together and presto, I had a perfectly fitted half an umbrella. After a visit to Joanne's fabric store where I wandered the aisles in search of some sort of clasp or button apparatus, I ended up simply buying a bunch of rope and sewing varying lengths to the edge of the fabric. The ropes were then pulled tight and tied to the frame. I cut plastic pots in half to fit snug against the wall. They also had to fit on top of the 12 inch wide and 5 inch deep platform on top of the umbrella. The Armstrong Garden Center in Carlsbad was extremely helpful. They walked me through the outside patio sourcing flowers that met my criteria. Colorful, tall, able to grow in lots of sunlight and within both dry and wet conditions. I excitedly planted the flowers in the halved pots, which fit snugly. They sat in my garden for a handful of days to guarantee that they would take in the small pots, which they happily did. I also purchased a watering can from the nursery, which I painted in my signature drip style, dripped a signature, and finished it with a thin layer of gloss. The umbrella installation went smoothly. With the help of Lauren Tipton, the umbrella was installed using four anchors and four screws. My initial date of installation was August 11th to coincide with the local Art in the Village event. But as the project evolved, I quickly realized that I needed one additional week. I arrived early on Saturday and prepped my space with a table loaded with buckets of paint and a collection of brushes. I began by laying down a base coat between a flurry of welcomed guests including local friends, curious village visitors, family, and a reporter from the Coast News. I began to build up the shapes, establishing a light source in the upper right hand corner of the canvas, resulting in a blending of shadows and highlights of each section. I returned the following day and continued rendering the round shapes followed by a thick outline inspired by my love for black cartoon outlines, an aesthetic that inspired my early love for illustration. I signed the finished doodle installation just after midday on Sunday, August 18th and invited my mom to be the first to water doodles umbrella flowers. An important phase of implementing public art is observing the new relationship between the art and the community. After installation, I quickly observed that younger and shorter community members were unable to reach and water the flowers atop the umbrella. This observation inspired me to revise the project by adding a water pump, ultimately increasing participation. Water is able to be pumped from the watering can in hand through the umbrella and up into the flowers.
After completion, it was time to invite the community. Although I use all forms of advertising and promotion, my all-time favorite is the old-school printed flyer attached to the local streets. The combination of mural painting and installation is my attempt to evolve the notion of public art, where the artwork jumps off the wall into the community and becomes an active member of our artistic culture within the Carlsbad Village. The growing flowers are an important part of the installation. Without the community's engagement, the flowers and the artwork as it is intended cannot survive. I thank you all for becoming an artist, a collaborator of this project. Each time you water the flowers, you help them grow and extend the lifespan of the artwork. Therefore, we are all an artist collaborating on this project together. And without your interaction and participation, this piece of artwork cannot continue. So thanks to the local community, village visitors, and all whom interact with this project, as well as all art in the Carlsbad Village. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the streets.